These are the seven Bitcoin charts that you need to see right now. I know that when you get these dip situations coming in, it can be a bit scary sometimes, but you have to zoom out and look at the big picture to really see what is going on in this market. Break all that and more down for you in today's video. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's a topic you'd like to learn some more about, maybe just stay up to date with, then you should definitely subscribe to the Lark Davis channel. Of course, a quick second to tap on that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm would be massively appreciated. And anybody who would like to get a notification when I put out a new video, you should click on the notification bell. By the way, if you are a cryptocurrency trader, then you need to get yourself an account over on Femex. You can long and short a wide variety of the top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Chainlink, Polkadot. They got all of the good stuff over there. And they have a special bonus going on right now where you can get up to $3,500 in trading bonuses on top of the $100 bonus that you'll get for using my link down below in the description and a 10% discount on your fees by using that link. So go ahead and check it out if you are a trader. Now let's get into the first chart, which is actually multiple charts. Just taking a look here at the, the technicals for Bitcoin right now. What are we currently looking at? Well, first let's talk about the old double top pattern. A lot of people have been talking about this, that we are looking at a double top scenario, which would see the price of Bitcoin going down dramatically. However, I would like to point out that the double top does not confirm until we pass this green line right here. So around $57,500. Once we pass that line, then the double top pattern would be confirmed. Now that of course would have a pretty uh, potentially dramatic effect we could say because the target for this double top pattern is actually down here in the uh, mid to uh, high $40,000 range. So we have not seen that double top confirm yet. A lot of people will start talking about a double top before it actually happens exiting their positions on the assumption that, well, just because we have two similar price peaks that we will inevitably see a double top formation pattern playing out with a massive dramatic drop coming in afterwards. That does not confirm until we see the price close a daily candle below this green line. Right now we have not done that. So something for you to keep an eye out for. If we do confirm that candle underneath there, then yes, we are looking at a double top pattern coming into play here. Now, that drop may sound very, very scary because right now we've seen Bitcoin come down by 15%, which is <gasps> terrifying. We're only up 200% this year, but down 15% in the last few days. Da, da, da. That, of course, is our current price action. Now we have lots of great areas of support as we come down here. I was talking yesterday about this key area, it should be a 23% uh, price fall from top to trough, peak to valley. That is an area that would be very typical in terms of a Bitcoin market correction. If we were to achieve the technical target for the double top pattern, then we're actually looking at a 30% correction here for Bitcoin, which is, to be honest, pretty normal in a bull market. This stuff happens all of the time, all the time. So it's not actually anything to get all worked up about. Now, one thing I'd like to point out too, and this, this of course depends on this being the bottom here, which we have not necessarily seen that be the case yet. I'd like to see, of course, this daily candle confirm, preferably back above this area of price support here. Yesterday's candle did close just above our very critical support here around $60,000. It'd be nice to see this daily candle here also closing above $60,000. We still have about 20 hours on time recording this video to see how that, of course, plays out. But so far, so far, we keep getting higher valleys, so higher lows. We started off here. Next, um, higher low came in here, coming in here, coming in here, and currently, 
currently unconfirmed daily candle, of course, looks like we could be putting in a another one here just by a tiny hair, but it would indeed be another higher valley, so to speak. So that would be good if that were the case. That would then get us back on the road to recovery. That, of course, would then bring in another interesting situation. It would be, would we see our recovery bring us up to like $70,000 and then back down again? Because this pattern right here, this big surge up, this big correction down, peak one, peak two, if we got a peak three, would remind me a heck of a lot of, well, this. <laughs> this right here. The end of December, start of the year, obviously massive run up, huge correction, massive run up, huge correction. First peak, correction. Second peak, correction. Of course, putting in the whole time up those higher lows, higher low here, higher low here, higher low here. Third peak potentially coming where the lows, the higher lows finally break and we start actually going back down into a down trend. Not saying that's, you know, what's going to happen necessarily. It's just an interesting thing that I noticed in the charts. Thought I would point it out to you and uh, just put it on your radar. I also want to take a look, quick look here at the RSI. Let's bring up the old RSI here, Relative Strength Index. We can see the RSI has been falling quite dramatically. Obviously, that bearish divergence that we spotted a few days ago before we saw the price uh, crash really start accelerating has been playing out as a bearish divergence tends to do. But I wanted to bring up this in particular to your notice, which is the four hour charts here. So we can see the RSI right now on the four hour charts very oversold. Now we haven't actually had a reading like this since quite a while back here, since actually back in September. That was our last oversold reading for Bitcoin. Of course, at the time, the price of Bitcoin was just under $40,000, which was a great buying opportunity. Now, just because the RSI is currently down at 22, doesn't mean that it can't go lower. Obviously it can. However, what we tend to see is that when we do have these oversold readings, it is not a bad time to be potentially thinking about adding a bit to your bag, stacking some sats on the dip. This shows, of course, a strong dip situation where we have an oversold reading on the charts. You can see, of course, back here as well, uh, early September, we got a similar uh, oversold reading here on the chart as well. So there you go. That's the charts. Now, I wanted to just real quick, share some, some investing wisdom from Mark Yusko. He said, volatility is not your enemy. And he's absolutely right. Volatility is your friend if you make it your friend. If you can retrain your brain to start seeing red days as opportunities, then you're gonna do so much better in this market. Remember, we wanna buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high, not the opposite. Most people in this market do the opposite, which is why in spite of how generous the cryptocurrency market is, a lot of people still end up realizing losses because they're chasing the pumps, selling the dumps. And of course, you do that long enough, you don't have much of an investment portfolio left. You got to do it the other way around. You got to buy when there's dips sell when there's pumps. Of course, the Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just a long-term wealth asset for me. I'm not particularly interested in selling my Bitcoin anytime in the near future, if at all. We'll see how it goes in 5 or 10, 20 years. But uh, right now, no plans to sell my Bitcoin. The altcoins, though, oh, yes. Altcoins are regularly flipped over for either cash, Bitcoin, or Ethereum. I did, though, buy a little bit more Bitcoin today. You're looking at the charts, see what's playing out, have the oversold reading on the RSI. I thought, well, you know, we'll take a little punt, just add a little bit to my stack. Not a dramatic amount of Bitcoin, but a little bit more Bitcoin to the long-term HODL stack. If we do get some kind of double top scenario confirmed and we go down even farther, I'll buy more. I will buy more later. So even let's just say I bought, you know, just a, a fraction now while well, I'll buy a bag later. And if it goes down more, I'll buy a truckload. <laughs> you scale up as it goes down with your buys, but add it a little bit here just for the cause, guys, just for the cause. Now, next, let's get into our second chart here. Bitcoin continues 
to leave exchanges and head to cold storage as the volume of Bitcoin going out of exchanges remains very high. So this is net transfer volume to and from exchanges. So when it's in the green, that's more Bitcoin going into exchanges. When it's in the red, that is people taking Bitcoin out of the exchanges and basically dumping into cold storage or somewhere else, right? Maybe they're taking it to uh, Celsius or something like that. But point is, it's not open for sale on the market. We are continuing to see strong interest in buying Bitcoin. People are continuing to stack up those sats, stack up that Bitcoin overall. So very, very good chart to see. This shows that in spite of the record high prices, people are continuing to accumulate, which is a good thing. We are also seeing this Bitcoin exchange balances just keep on falling. Smart Money, of course, likes to buy on the red days. We see an acceleration of buying happening on the chart just here. Pretty amazing chart, this uh, balance on exchanges chart, actually. But, you know, rather similar to the one we just looked at. Uh, but just want to bring this up as well, because that balance on exchanges, it just keeps falling. It just keeps falling. We had peak Bitcoin back here, early 2020. It's my opinion, we're never going to see that much Bitcoin ever again on exchanges for sale. It's just going to keep going down. We're sure we'll have a spike up during the next bear market cycle, just like we did here in our June, July uh, bear cycle. We had a big spike up, a lot of Bitcoin came into exchanges, and then it got sucked right off by the whales, the institutions, the hedge funds, the family offices, the private funds, all these guys transferring the Bitcoin from the top buyers, uh, the people who bought the top, sold the bottom, the smart money came in and bought that up, of course, as always seems to happen. The next chart I want to share with you is this. It's Bitcoin as a global search term in Google Trends. It's actually pretty amazing because we just hit a new all-time high price for Bitcoin. What was that, a week ago? Something like that. And no one's paying attention to this. This is a crazy, crazy thing for me. See, a lot of the retail money, they are chasing after, uh, you know, dog meme coins and stuff like this, which is fine. People can chase after dog meme coins. But it's pretty impressive that we actually had our all-time high search interest back in May, just before the market rolled over. Then, very interestingly, now here we are. New all-time highs. And we're only at uh, 31 compared, of course, to 100 back here. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So all that Bitcoin being bought up right now. Remember the two charts I just shared with you? Lots of Bitcoin being taken off of exchanges. You know, exchange balances, reaching lows, not seen in years. Who's buying all the Bitcoins? Not retail investors. Yes, it is to an extent. Obviously, retail investors are here. We don't have a retail mania happening right now. It's smart money. Smart money is the ones buying Bitcoin, family offices, private funds, all these guys, and you, you're also smart money. If you're here buying Bitcoin right now, also smart money because you're getting Bitcoin at strategically interesting times ahead of the herds that will come in when Bitcoin crosses over $100,000 as it inevitably will. Next, let's take a look here at the Bitcoin Pi Cycle Top Indicator. Now the Pi Cycle rolled over, of course, here for us um, back in May price plummeted like freaking crazy. It was a good time. It was a good time. Dips were bought. Stat, sats were stacked. However, that is an, an indicator that shows that the market is going to roll over and roll over. It did indeed. Now, what's interesting for me is that this is swinging back up big time, which would seem to indicate the start of of a new market cycle where we are, of course, then going to go on to reach those new all-time highs, see the market continuing to develop. Look at what happened back here in um, 2017, because this is a pretty good indicator. We had our blow off top, incredible, incredible fast growth for the price of Bitcoin. And then of course the price rolled over, the Pi top indicator showed us that, and it just went down. It just went down and 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 down. This is the 111-day moving average. 
it just went down. There was no major uptick in that until early 2019. Now, what we are already seeing with our Pi Cycle Top Indicator is a strong uptick already starting to happen here, already starting to happen. We're already seeing that strong recovery starting to come in. Now, what does that look like? That looks like, to me anyway, just like what we saw back here in 2013, where we had our initial uh, rollover, massive sell-off, and then, of course, a recovery coming in afterwards. So could be a similar situation, our so-called double bubble, double pump, uh, bull market here for Bitcoin, mimicking in some ways what we saw back in 2013. So it's pretty encouraging for me to see that we are seeing the Pi Cycle Top Indicator actually trending up quite hard at the moment. So that's a good thing. The Bitcoin logarithmic growth curve. Let's have a look at that next. So you can see here on the bottom that we uh, have not even come close to seeing Bitcoin here, we got myself off the screen there real quick. We've not even come close to seeing Bitcoin reaching up to an area where you would generally consider the top line of the, uh, the logarithmic scale here, where that's okay. That's the top. That's the blow-off scenario happening. Market peaking out. We have not seen that yet. What have we seen? We've seen uh, sort of a halfway move, right? We did get up above the midpoint here, but we didn't get a blow-off top. We didn't go up super high. So this feels more like something like this or something like this. Again, that end of cycle moment has not come yet. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are already saying, okay, bear market's here. Bitcoin's going down to $10,000. We're only 15% down, guys. There's a lot of bearish sentiment right now. So the charts, a lot of charts do not, um, do not show that we're going into a multi-year bear market right now. Yes, they happen. Yes, they're savage. Yes, it's a normal feature of the cryptocurrency market. Yes, they will come again, even though I believe we're going to see the roaring 20s of the cryptocurrency markets coming. That will not be without crazy volatility. Do keep that in mind. But for this market cycle, I don't think we have topped out yet. And just for a bit of reference here, if we are going to see Bitcoin topping out on the log charts here, if we were to, for example, top out sometime in like February or March next year, but we're talking just according to logarithmic growth curves here, a Bitcoin going up to $150,000. And if Bitcoin gets up to $150,000, which we've shared lots of different price number predictions, 150, 180, $214,000, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of numbers being thrown around out there. Basically, most people are thinking, we are still going higher. $69,000 was not the top. If Bitcoin goes to $157,000, just imagine how crazy it's going to be for your altcoins. Those things are going to moon like crazy, man. It will be glorious. <laughs> Absolutely glorious. And the final chart I want to share with you here from uh, TechDev52. This is the fractal with gold. So the, uh, of course, the green and red candles here. That's Bitcoin, the big yellow line that is gold. We can see how similar it has been so far. And look, not exactly perfect, but very, very close, shockingly close to see how the charts of gold, another store of value asset, have been playing out in comparison to Bitcoin. Now, the gold chart that's over a longer time frame, Bitcoin, of course, with internet, uh, everything just moves faster now. Adoption curves move faster. More money comes into the market, et cetera, et cetera. But the pattern is very, very similar. And if that pattern holds true, then we are going to see Bitcoin getting up over $200,000 if it was to follow along with this pattern. Now, he's giving it here as a potential uh, blow-off top happening sometime around like February, for example, February, March. That, I think a lot of people are talking about the lengthening cycle. A lot of people are talking about seeing this thing roll over into 2022. That's when we get the market top. When we'll, you know, until then, obviously, there'll be volatility. But the market's not done yet. This, this sucker is not cooked. It's not over. We still got some time in this market before things get all bearish on us. Anyway, 
just my two Satoshis for the day. Your question, have you been buying the dip? And if so, what have you been buying? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.